Hi everyone, I'm Barbara Moody. We're going to do a short little exercise on creating a artwork for the big tiny art event, Rocky Neck Art Colony. So I hope you can follow along and make one at some point. So Lily and I are going to show you how to do this. First, what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these little six by six squares. You can pick these up at Marianne McCormick's house. And she's also going to have for you a little frame. So eventually they're going to look like this. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tone this paper because I like to have some kind of color on here. So if you see on this palette, I'm just gonna mix some kind of color on here, maybe this color. All right, and we're just gonna make this nice and opaque. Now you can see this is a little bit transparent and I don't like that because there's too much water in there. So now I'm gonna do this again, do a little less water and make sure that the paint is nice and thick so I can't really see the paper showing through there. All right, so I'm just gonna go over this one more time. Oh, that's not mixing too well, is it? That's better. All right, and then we're gonna let that dry. Now, if you prefer you can make one a little landscape like this. You can just make this up in your head. You paint the blue, you paint the green, you put a couple of cedar trees in there, a little bit of light and shadow, because we're gonna put objects on top of this. Or your third option is to just create this with a soft horizon line. And this is for still life objects that you can put in there like a jar or any kind of thing like that. So there's three ways, plain, landscape, or still life with a horizon line. So we're gonna let this one dry. Now over here, you can see I have all kinds of objects here that I have taken um, from the internet. And I just look up something like sheep, be like this, and then I print it on my computer, well, the on, regu on regular printer paper. This works actually better than cutting things out of magazines. The, printer magazine surface isn't good. So the printer is fine. And then I just cut them out. So we have dogs and we have cats. And some of you who did this workshop last year, you remember we did birds. And so this is, this is how this might look with the bird sitting on there. So you see this, and then we're gonna do this. And then we're gonna paint over the bird so it doesn't look so much like a photo but it'll look very painterly. So those of you who did birds last year, you can try some other kind of images here. Now I'm gonna show you briefly on the computer how to print these. So if you see on my computer screen, I just looked up this house thing, okay? So I have this and then I'm gonna do file and print and it's gonna come up on the printer. Now this size would be too big. See the house is gonna be too big to fit on a six by six square. So I'm gonna change this 100% over here to 60% and now it's a little tiny house that I can cut out. So whatever percentage and then I'm just gonna put print and it will print on my printer and then you can just cut it from there. Okay, so then you're gonna end up with all of these little objects that you can put on your flat grounds. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna decide how to adhere this to our colored piece of paper. So let's say we wanna do this cat. Mm, all right, let's say we wanna do uh, this house. Where's the house and the rabbit? Here we go. I don't know about this background. Let's do the house and the rabbit. Not on here. Do the house and the rabbit on this. All right, so we're gonna do the rabbit and a house. Now, if we're gonna do that, what we wanna do is use this matte medium to stick down the collage. It comes by Golden or Liquitex or whatever. And it's a kind of glue, I just poured mine into this extra jar. It's a kind of glue that's much better than Elmer's glue because Elmer's glue is gonna leave air bubbles. So what we're gonna do is put these two upside down. 
we're going to put a very thin coat of acrylic medium on there. Look, that's picking up the pesto. All right, and then I'm going to put it on here too, where these are going to go. And so you're really putting the acrylic medium on both sides. Now I'm gonna move this up a little bit because remember, this is a six by six piece of paper, but the opening of our mat is only five by five. So I'm gonna leave a little margin there. And then over here, we're gonna have our house in the background. And we're just gonna press that down flat and leave it to dry. These have to be dry before you start painting on them because if you put water on top of this, it's gonna start buckling. So that's what it could look like. Now, you could keep that there. You could add some more things in there. Let's say we wanted, you know, a plant on here. Okay, we could do that. Or, you know, we could put something else in the background, a little deer, okay, whatever we wanna put in there. Or if you're on this, you could have asparagus there, or you could have this fossil. It looks kind of nice with the horizon line or any kind of flower or shells. You could arrange those somehow. Like sometimes just one is enough. And so once you adhere that on there, you're gonna have a nice base to keep going. So the next step we're gonna do is um, we're going to start painting this. Um, and so once this is dry, you can take your colors over here and just find a nice contrasty color. Now, again, you wanna mix these highlights nice and thick. And by, ask, by adding white, you're gonna make your colors more opaque. So I can make some really nice highlights here by adding this white to our opaque kind of color. And then we can mix all kinds of browns or whatever we want to do here. We can put some little bits of purple in here and just make this really painterly. Put a little blue in the darkest parts. And then you can see on this, this is obviously not done, but you can see down here that I created a little cast shadow underneath this pot. And so that's what's gonna make it a little, look a little more three-dimensional. On this one, so here was our, here was my landscape that I painted first. Well, this one I painted a landscape. I glued on the house. I glued on this little person facing away. And now I'm gonna go back and find some colors and paint back into this find some like purplish color for the house. Okay, so I can paint all of these windows in here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be very kind of soft and painterly. Okay, and this too, I created a shadow here under the house and a shadow next to this guy. And you can see the light source is coming from here. So I put a little highlight here and then a shadow going to the left. So now it looks like he's actually in a landscape. Okay, and then here we go. This is how this is gonna look at the end with the mat on it. And that's why with our rabbit, when we're finished with this, this is gonna look like this. And of course we'd have a shadow under this house so it would create some kind of a deeper space in there. And that this one too. Let's put our let's put our cat in here. Okay, there's the cat. Okay, we might want to lighten this up a little bit. Okay, so this is a fun way of doing realism without having to actually draw. <laughs> All right, now there's one other thing I want to show you, and that's this. Oh, actually, I just want to show you this too. If you want to create a large Thing on here. You can put something big on there too. So this and this. That looks pretty good big too. 
four. Let me put this in here. And that looks pretty good too. So you can see if you painted over parts of that, it would look fun and interesting. All right, now the one more thing is this. If you feel like just one object at a time is not your thing to do, you can take any photo that you took like this, like take Gloucester houses or landscapes or whatever you want. And um, I made a print of this and then made a photocopy, but you can print right from your computer. So this is a close up of this. And I've just printed it at this size. And as you saw on the computer, you can make it larger or smaller based on that print thing. So now if I look at this, this could be a really interesting painting. So now what I'm gonna do is take any piece of white paper, do this, do our acrylic medium, our acrylic medium, paste this down really smoothly, let it dry, and then we're gonna paint on top of these. Paint the blue, paint the dark, and it's gonna be a really painterly kind of landscape. So this can work with this. Okay, here's a landscape that I printed from my printer. So look at that. We could make this beautiful landscape just by adhering this picture onto the piece of paper and then going carefully and just painting right over that. Let's try this over here. That looks pretty good too, or this. And then here's another one, this. We could have this, maybe we don't want our subject right in the middle, so there you go. You can imagine just painting that orangey color and then some blue for the water, the sky, sunsetty sky. Or we can do this part, make some beautiful things. So this is very easy to do without having to draw. Okay, so um, first, <laughs> First, I'm gonna show you my studio just because every artist likes to see other people's studios. So first, I'm gonna thank my videographer, who's Lily Chow. <laughs> thank you, Lily, my <laughs> granddaughter. <laughs> and now I'm just gonna go around my studio and show you this is where all my supplies are. This is my table. This is such a mess here. And then I have lots of wall space here. just been taking a portrait class so there's some portraits out there okay and then I have all my other supplies over here all the pencils color pencils pastels push pins and then over here I have um, some little paintings that I did before these portraits and another one this is actually Yana and then all my drawings over here and a lot of little paintings in here and then i have a big storage area in the cellar that um is all organized with all my stuff in it okay all right 